Talk about fridges. Welcome back to Trail Talk, guys. And today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about fridges and some general thinking if you're looking at purchasing a fridge or trying to decide is a fridge or a cooler right for me. There's no one is better than the other. I just want to go over general mindset if you guys are looking at getting a fridge or already have a fridge and some things to think about. So join us on this Trail Talk. The fridges we'll be discussing today are all 12 volt option compressor driven fridges. A lot of pre-built campers come with what's called three phase or absorption fridges that use propane, wall power, etc. These use a compressor to cool the interior and that's what we'll be talking about today. So to help you guys better answer that question, let me go over some stuff for you. So probably the first question that everybody asks when they're looking at fridges is, do I go with a fridge or do I go with a cooler? There's really no right answer. In my opinion, it's all based on the own individual's use case. A cooler may work really well for one person and a fridge may work really well over a cooler for somebody else. It really depends on how you're gonna use it, how long you're gonna be out for, what kind of group or people you're cooking for or needing food for. If you're looking at just doing some quick weekend getaways up in the mountains and you might be out for a few nights at the most, a cooler would do just great. It would hold all the food and drinks you need, hold ice for more than enough time over the weekend, where if you are going out and you're traveling longer term, up to weeks or even months at a time, a fridge will start to get very beneficial. You wouldn't have to be constantly replenishing the ice that's melting in your cooler. Just really consider your use case and how you're gonna be using it and that'll tell you, okay, maybe a fridge would make more sense in this install or a cooler would make more sense. To help you guys better answer the question of cooler versus fridge is let's look at it this way. If your trip duration is going to be lower, such as weekend getaways, a fridge, in my opinion, is more of a convenience factor than a necessity. As your trip duration grows and gets longer, week long, month long trips, it definitely becomes more of a necessity than a convenience. If you are just doing shorter trips and you can swing it, a fridge is a very nice convenience to have. It is really convenient to be able to put all of your foods in here, not worry about ice melting or just generally getting ice in general. And maybe you grab a cooler to put all your drinks in because it doesn't matter if the ice melts and gets your drinks wet. Another big benefit of a fridge over a cooler is you have the full capacity of the fridge, since the fridge does not require ice to cool, to be able to put drinks and food and what have you in there. A cooler, you have to take up quite a bit of this interior space with ice just to keep everything cold. So that's just another thing to take into account, is if you're really nitpicking on space in your setup, if you can get the biggest fridge that'll go into that space, it'll be the most use of that space. The compressor in the fridge takes up a lot less space than the amount of ice that would need to be in a cooler to cool your stuff for the weekend. If you are just more casually camping and it's shorter durations, and you're looking at buying a fridge, just keep in mind how you're gonna power it. If you have a fully set up overland rig or trailer that's already got solar and deep cycle batteries, then you're good to go. But if you're starting from scratch and the fridge is one of the first modifications you want to add to your camping setup, remember is that most fridges pull off a 12 volt power from your battery. You want to make sure you have a good way to power it that's not going to potentially leave you stranded. So if you are powering off your start battery, most fridges have a low voltage cutoff switch built into them or make sure you add a low voltage cutoff of some sort if it's pulling straight from your start battery. Ideally, you add a battery bank of some sort or a secondary battery that it pulls off of because this will be running quite a bit, especially if it's warmer and inside your vehicle and you don't wanna wake up the next morning and you can't start your vehicle. On a quick note of portable battery banks, a lot of them 
tend to have a lower amp rating on the 12 volt DC port. So just make sure that whatever battery bank you might be looking at to run your fridge, look up the stats of the fridge and make sure your battery bank can handle that amp draw rating. A lot of the 12 volt plugs on battery banks are a 10 amp max and some fridges will surge past 10 amps on startup. So just keep that in mind. Just your results may vary. Just look up the stats of whatever you're wanting to build out and make sure that that's gonna work for you. If you're running your fridge off of any kind of start battery or secondary battery on your camper or your rig, it's a really good idea to look at a solar panel setup. There's a ton of different options out there. We actually have a trail talk on basic solar panel options that we'll link in the description below. Generally speaking, you want to look at a solar panel that's about 100 watts or larger to run a fridge efficiently, plus any other devices you might be running. There's two popular styles of fridge. We have a chest style top loading fridge here. And in Adigan, we have a front open style fridge, more like the traditional style fridge you would have at your home. The top load fridge is probably the most universal one or most common one, just due to the efficiency of having a top load versus a front load. And they fit in a lot more spaces, especially in the back of overland rigs. With the front load style, these are a little bit more of a niche market. And what's neat about them though, is they will fit in more awkward spaces where you couldn't get into the top of a fridge or if you didn't want to slide, such as on a camper or a trailer system or in a canopy, the front loads are really nice. The drawback of a front load fridge is when you open it, cold air is very dense. So as soon as you open it, it dumps all the cold air out. So the efficiency is a little bit less than a top load where a top load, even when you open the lid, all that cold air can stay down inside of it a lot better. Just something to consider when you're looking at your options. The install on a front load fridge can be a little bit more involving. Generally, they're not a completely sealed system like most chest style fridges. So you might need to make a housing or have some sort of surround that it goes into, but they're very convenient depending on your space. With the chest load or top load fridges, they're a lot more universal. They also are generally all in a ready to go package, meaning that all you have to do is run a 12 volt power source of some sort to run them. When you open them, the colder, denser air will stay down in more. So even if you're in and out of it a lot, you're not gonna be dumping the cold air immediately and having it run a lot more. And because of the design, you can have baskets that allow you to stack and organize food a lot easier. They all have the option to have dual compartments or a fridge freezer. This one is a dual compartment, so you have two thirds of it as a fridge area, a third of it is a second compartment above the compressor area, so it's shallower, but you can also use that as a separate fridge compartment or a freezer, or you can make them both freezer compartments. If you have a trailer and a truck, it's a, not a bad idea to look at putting one in a trailer or one in your truck that you dedicate as a freezer to freeze all of your food that you wanna la have last longer and then have the other one as your fridge that you work out of daily. That's more speaking towards long-term travel. For short-term travel, you probably don't need to worry about that because you wanna have everything thawed ready to cook anyways. One thing to can also consider with a top load fridge over a front load is access into it. As you can see, we have this one on a slide because if it was inside of the vehicle, especially in this case, we couldn't get into it at all. Even with this removed, the lid would only open to about here. That's generally speaking, the most common issue is inside of a vehicle, access is really tricky unless it's in a camper, a live-in camper system. So slides are essential in this case so you can then access in top of your fridge. There's a lot of different slide options, slides that just pull out, slides that pull out and drop down, or slides that tilt out. So depending on how you wanna mount your fridge and what height that would be once it's pulled out, you might need one that tilts down lower or just a straight out slide may be sufficient for you if you can get into it. Once you've decided your use case and maybe if a fridge or a cooler is right for you, Probably the biggest thing to consider is the price differences. A really good cooler will cost about the same as a very basic or more off-brand level fridge. 
For example, probably the most affordable fridges you can find online are in that three to $400 range, which you can get a really nice big cooler for that kind of money. So there's definitely a much higher entry level cost with a fridge versus a cooler. Also, another thing to consider with a fridge is once you buy it, you can't just put it in your vehicle and it's ready to go. You need to have it hooked up somehow to your battery. You need to wire it in, make sure everything is tied down, always load and lash, even if it's a cooler or a fridge. A cooler is extremely durable. You can just put it into the back of a trailer, a truck bed, tie it down, and it's gonna work. A fridge, you just wanna be a lot more protective of it since there are electronics and moving parts. Just wanna make sure it's in a good, secure area. So once you've determined the size of fridge you need, the last thing is, you know, what brand do you want to purchase or invest in? There's a lot of good affordable options out there online. Your results may vary. I know a lot of folks running them and they've had no issues at all. But if you're using it longer term or something you know you're going to need to rely on, going with higher quality brands is always a better route. You generally will get a more serviceable system if you have an issue. The control panels, the compressors are gonna be more likely to be able to be fixed or replaced on those brands. So just consider that as well. The other thing to consider with more brand name expensive options versus the less brand name, less expensive options is the efficiency. There are gonna be a lot of fridges, even from brand name companies that are gonna be more or less efficient. So that's another thing to research is amp draw and wattage use. You can figure out wattage if you can only find amp draw spec, but generally speaking, the better quality fridge is going to be more efficient, less power hungry. Some ways to improve efficiency over fridges, especially with front load fridges, is it's always a good idea to have as much in them as you can to be able to hold in the cold. For example, if I'm gonna go out for an overnight trip and I have a big 55 or 65 quart fridge or cooler, and I only need this amount for my food, I'll just throw all my drinks and water in there as well, even if I don't need to. That way, when the fridge has everything cold and you open the door to get something out, all that cold is gonna help retain in there, allowing the compressor to not run as often, saving energy where I can use it elsewhere. Well, I hope that helps you guys make a better decision on if I should look at a fridge or if a cooler will be enough or if I should consider fridge and cooler combo. Fridges are a wonderful luxury when you're out camping and coolers also have a very good use case as well. So hopefully this video helps you guys decide on what you need and we'll see you guys on the next Trail Talk. Thank you.